You've got a bunch of sounds that all have different durations, and you want them to all have the same duration. There are three ways to do this. Do you want to stretch or shrink them to occupy the same amount of time? Or do you not want to modify the sound, but simply make sure all the files have the same playback duration? In that case, you have the sounds and you see where they end, and you can equalize the audio duration by adding trailing silence. Or maybe the reverse. You can make sure that all the sounds are aligned at the offset by padding silence at the beginning so that the sounds all end at the same time. I'll walk through a script that will allow you to do any of these three methods. When you open the script, your first decision is how to modify the sounds, as we just said. So the script starts with an option menu. This is the code, and when you run it, it looks like this. You can choose any of those three methods. Then you tell it how to decide what duration to use. And here's what you'll see. For example, you can match it to the longest or shortest sound in your list, or the average of all of them. Or you can enter in a specific target duration, like making all the sounds 500 milliseconds. You would type in 0.5, as you see on the screen here. Finally, you tell it which sounds to modify. On the startup menu, you can say that you're working with objects that are already in your list, or maybe you already have a big folder full of sounds and you want to modify all of them without having to bring them up into the prop window by hand. If you're working from an existing folder of sounds, you have the option of saving all your output by clicking this box. It will create a new folder that reflects the output duration so that it won't overwrite the sounds you already have in the existing folder. But even though those sounds are in a new folder, you still might want to add something to the file name to mark that they've been modified. You can type that modification in this box here, and we'll add what you type at the end of the new file names. So if you type in this little underscore EQ, you can see that the output will reflect that. And if you leave that part blank, the file names will just remain the same. Now let's see it in action. I've pasted the script into my little prot script window here. And at first, I'm going to run this just using some sounds I have in the object list already. I'm going to run the script. And now I can see all those options I just went over. In this case, I'm going to stretch or shrink the duration to make them all exactly one second long. And just because I type this in doesn't mean it knows to do that. I have to specify that that's the duration I want by clicking this option right here. Otherwise, it's going to assume I want to match it to some measurement I made from the batch. I won't save the files this time, and I'm continuing to click here that I'm just going to work with the objects in the list. I'll hit OK. It'll ask me to select all the sounds I want. Here they are. And pretty quickly, it'll pull them all up. And if I pull any of them up, they should all be one second. This one is. This one is. They all are, because the script works. It'll also give me this output here. Uh, in the case that I want to stretch or warp the duration, it'll give me a little bit of information I can use. Um, it'll start with the object name, the original duration, the multiplier for the duration that I use to match the output. And the spacing looks a little funny here because I've put in tabs so that if you wanted to copy this into, let's say, an Excel spreadsheet, it'll paste gracefully and you can see all those numbers line up uh, in a column nicely. Now let's suppose we want to do it a different way. I'll run the script, and this time I want to match them all to the longest duration. It's not going to give me all that output. And now, no matter what I put in here, even if I put in 973, it's going to ignore that because that's only used if I select that I'm going to use that specific duration I typed in. So I'm going to match it to the longest duration. It will again will ask me which sounds I want. I'm going to select them all. and it. As you notice, added this little EQ at the end. Um, in this case, it told me that it warped it to this longest duration of 732, because that was the longest word we had, the word firm. Now let's look at what it looks like to modify all the sounds in a folder that already exists. I'm going to get rid of all the sounds that are currently in the object list. Now when I run the script, the first thing I want to do is go get the path where my sounds are and copy that into this folder field. Indicate that I do want to run those sounds and that I want to save it. 
The other selections I still have to make. So for example, if I want to set them all to one, uh, I have to indicate that I want to do that. And in this case, I'll pad silence after the sound just to make sure they're all one second and it adds a little duration to the end of each one. All right, so here we can keep an eye on this folder as I run the script. It was pretty fast. And now I have a new folder here and notice the folder name, you know, I can change this to be whatever I want, but it just reflects that the output was a thousand milliseconds long. I can open it up and find all those sounds there. There are some cases where the script might warn you that you might be doing something wrong. So for example, if I want to pad silence after the sound and I want to match to the shortest duration in the batch, that won't make sense because I can't take a long sound and add any silence to it to match it to a shorter duration. If I try to do that, it'll warn me and say, did you mean to select the longest duration? Or maybe you meant to select a specific duration, something longer than you expect. Let's suppose I meant to select a specific duration and I want them all to be 0.3 seconds. If I continue and select all the sounds I want to work with, something's going to go wrong here. Because again, I have sounds that are already longer than that, so I can't add any silence to make them shorter. So it proposes that I use the target duration of the longest sound, uh, and it'll fill in this box with that long duration. But if I want something different than that, let's say 1.4, I can continue. Or I can realize that I probably have made a bunch of wrong decisions along the way and just abandon the procedure. So to start that over, Let's suppose I want to pad silence after the sound. What I probably want to do is match it to the longest duration in the batch. And if I run that and select a bunch of sounds, it'll do it without any warning messages. There are a few things to keep in mind when you use this script. First, if you're trying to match the longest, shortest, or average duration in your batch of sounds, it's going to run slowly, especially if you're reading those sounds off of a network. That's because it needs to loop through all of the sounds once just to get the target value, and then loop through all of them again to match that target value by manipulating the sounds. Another thing is, if you end up needing to stretch a sound longer than about three times its original duration, you're going to hear audible distortion in the sound. It might sound gravelly or broken, and some parts might be missing altogether. If you stretch voiceless sounds, they might end up sounding partially voiced because the stretched repetition of a sound is basically the same as making it periodic. These are normal and known consequences. If you stretch your sounds beyond their limit and you get bad results, don't say I didn't warn you. And a final note, words naturally have different durations. Equalizing duration by stretching and warping the sound does not mean that you're making them perceptually equal. If you record the word bet, it's probably going to be shorter than the word shell. If you stretch them to be equal in duration, then it might sound like you have a slow bet or a fast shell. In other words, by making the durations equal, you might accidentally make them unequal perceptually, because we expect those differences in duration. Sometimes this is not noticeable at all. You can do it and test for yourself whether it's impacting your stimuli in a way that you don't expect. As always, if you're preparing stimuli for an experiment, make your decisions thoughtfully, listen to the output, look at the waveforms, and ensure good quality.